Hello and welcome to the first uh, standard mathematics video for the McGrathmatics channel. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate you watching. Uh, today I wanted to sort of have a bit of a practice of how to make videos for my classes so that in the event that we are forced online, I'll know what I'm doing. So today I wanted to just run through a few revision questions for your uh, tasks coming up this week. So these are three questions that explore concepts that are going to be useful for you on your test, hopefully. Okay. So let's uh, kick off. Okay, so for our first example, we're looking at the mathematics of investing. So we have Steph wants to have $30,000 in her savings account after five years. How much must she invest now if the interest rate on the account is 3% per annum compounding monthly? So Steph is obviously a complete baller, but she needs to figure out the maths first to figure out how much to invest now so that she ends up with 30 grand after five years, okay? So the crucial part of the question is that it mentions compounding monthly, okay? This tells you two important things. First of all, it tells you we need to be using the compound interest formula as opposed to the simple interest formula. It also tells us that we need to be doing our calculations monthly rather than yearly, okay? Because the compound period dictates uh, how often you're recalculating, so it does affect the mathematics, okay? So we have our compound interest formula. If you find that hard to memorize, there is a version of that on your formula sheet. It just looks a little bit different. Instead of uh, P for principal, they say PV for present value, which means the same thing. And instead of A for final amount, they have FV for final value. Okay, but it's the exact same formula, just maybe a bit unfamiliar to you. So from the question, we have an interest rate of 3% per annum, and we have a time period of five years. But like I said, because the question is compounding monthly, we need to convert both of those to a monthly figure. Okay, so for 3% for a year, we need to go to a monthly interest rate by dividing it by 12. Okay, so 3 divided by 12 goes from year to month. And then we need to do the opposite to 5. Okay, because 1 year would be 12 months. So 5 years is going to be 5 lots of 12 months. So if you're doing these questions properly, you should always be dividing your rate by a number and multiplying your time period by the same number. And it kind of keeps the balance. Okay. So we end up with 0.25% per month for our interest rate, and we have a time period of 60 months. Okay, now that we know that, we can substitute into our formula, but you have to be careful because like I said, for this question, we aren't actually finding the final amount. We've already been given the final amount of 30,000. We're trying to find out how much to invest now. We're trying to find the principal, P. Okay, so when you're subbing in the 30,000, it's gonna go in for A, not for P. So we'll sub that all in. And we end up with this formula here. 30,000 equal to principal, present value, whatever, times one plus 0.25% to the power of 60. Okay, so this is a little equation we need to solve for P. Uh, we did a couple of these in class and a couple of you recognized that, well, this thing here, this one plus bloody bloody blah, 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 is really just a number. And it's a number that's multiplying with P. So if we want to solve this for P, the smartest thing to do is take both sides of the equation and divide by this number. So that's what I'll be doing next. Okay, both sides of the equation divided by this term here. Okay, because now these two uh, cancel each other away and you're left with just P. So we get this. Okay, so to figure out our starting amount, we just need to put through our calculator 30,000 all divided by 1 plus 0.25% to the power of 60, and we get an answer of about 25,826 and seven cents. If the question doesn't specify, always a good idea just to round to dollars and cents just to be safe. And that should be our final answer, full marks. Okay, so a, a few tricks this to be aware of. First of all, the compound period, you need to be reading the question carefully and making sure that you're doing the right calculations. And also just double check if you're finding an A or a P based on the question, okay, so you have to read. Okay, for our second one, we have a triangular question. We have find the perimeter of the triangle below, given that its area is 24 centimeters squared. Okay, so um, I love this question, not just because triangles are my favorite shape for um, no real reason, I just like triangles. And so we have to find the perimeter. And we've only been given one side. So the question is really find these two sides of this right angle triangle. 
and the information given to you is that A, it's a right angle triangle, which is important, and B, this triangle has an area of 24 square centimeters. Okay, so uh, to do this question, you do need to know the area formula for a triangle because we haven't given the area. Okay, so the area of a triangle is the base times the height divided by two. I'm just gonna call the base here B for base, if you didn't get that. So if I did the base multiplied with the height, so six times B, and I halved it divided by two, I should get the answer of 24. Okay, so base times height gives me a rectangle and any triangle is really just half a rectangle. That's why we divide it by two. Okay, so if you got that far, we just need to uh, multiply both sides of the equation by two. So we get um, times two on the left and times two on the right because that's gonna cancel off the divided by two here and just leave us with six times B. Okay, so 24 times two gives us 48. And now you might be able to figure this one out by yourselves, but in case you're a bit bad with your times tables, we're gonna solve this equation by dividing both sides by six to get rid of this multiplied by six because we're essentially trying to find the base B. Okay, so take both sides, divide it by six. The times six and the divide six are inverse, they vanish and we get 48 divided by six gives us B equals eight. Okay, so we're almost there. We've got two of the sides now. We just need to find the third side. Okay, so uh, have a quick think about how you would find the third side of this triangle. Three, two, one. If your brain went towards Pythagoras, you are a winner because that is the answer here. Okay, whenever you have two sides of a right angle triangle, any two sides, you can use the Pythagoras equation to find the third. In this case, we're trying to find a hypotenuse. I'm just going to call it um, x for unknown. And we're going to put this into our formula. Okay, so the two shorter sides squared and plus together equals the hypotenuse squared. So we have six squared plus eight squared equals x squared. And then six squared plus eight squared works out to be 100. So we have x squared equals 100. And now we just take the square root of both sides to get rid of the squared. And we end up with x equal 10 centimeters. Okay. Um, we're still not done yet because if we read the question, we were actually asked to find the perimeter. We have found the three sides, but the perimeter will be the sum of those three. So to finish off the question, we just have to do perimeter equals six plus eight plus 10, which is equal to 24 centimeters. So even the cooler part about this triangle is that its perimeter and its area are the same number. Coincidence? Yes. Okay, and for our last revision question, we're doing more financial math. This one is borrowing rather than investing. We have Tomasi decided to buy a car for 35,000 big ones. He pays a 20% deposit and takes out a loan for the remaining balance at 9% flat interest over five years. What is the total amount he will pay for the car? So as with all these questions, I encourage you to pause it and have a go first, because then if you have had a go, then what I'm about to say is probably gonna make more sense. Okay, so uh, diving into it, the first thing I need to be aware of is that if you're paying interest on a car loan, you're not gonna pay interest on the deposit, okay? That's, that's why you pay a deposit. It, it reduces how much you have to pay, which means it reduces your loan, so you pay less interest. Okay, so the first thing I'll be doing in this question is finding the 20% deposit, okay? It's 20% of the cost price of the car, so we're gonna be doing 20% of $35,000, which means you just need to uh, multiply those two together. And we get an answer of $7,000. Okay, now that's important because for the interest calculation, which is the next step, we need to take the 7,000 away from the 35 and get what's left over. Okay, he's only going to take out a loan for what's left to pay after the deposit. Okay, so if we do 35,000, take away the deposit, we get 28,000. Okay, so this figure is called the balance owing. This is how much he has to pay off with his loan. So this is how much we're going to calculate his interest based off. Okay, so that's important. That's probably the biggest trick to this question that a lot of people sort of uh, forget. Okay, so we are going to be finding 9% flat interest rate. Now, when I say flat, that's just another way of saying simple interest. Okay, it's not compound, it's simple. So we're going to be finding 9% simple interest on 28,000 over five years using our handy little simple interest formula, I equals PRN. Okay, so our interest is what we're trying to find. 
our principal is our starting amount, which is not 35, like I said, it's the 28, okay, the balance owing. Interest rate of 9%, time period of five years, we've got 9% um, and five years, so we do 28 times 9% times five, and we get an answer of 12,600. Okay, so we're almost at the end now uh, to answer the question, which is what is the total amount he will pay for the car? Well, we think about it, well, we have to pay for, first of all, the $7,000 deposit. We have to pay for the um, the $28,000 eventually, but we're paying it off over five years, and in those five years, we'll also pay $12,600 in interest. Okay, so those are the three things that tomasi has got to pay over this. Well, this one's up front, and these two are over five years. So in total, this $35,000 car is really going to cost him $47,600. Okay, so there's our final answer. Bit of work, but the most important thing to do is read the question and understand the terms, really. And that's pretty much it. All right, so that'll wrap it up for today. We're just gonna skip to the homework now for today. So your homework is to give this video a like, to push it towards the training tab, which means I can retire um, at the age of 26. Uh, next up, leave a comment. So let me know if you found this video useful. If you thought this was a disgusting waste of your time and I should be ashamed of myself, please let me know in the comments. And if you hit that subscribe button, uh, next time I put some more spicy standard maths up, you will be the first to know about it. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, take care. See you at school. Bye.